In this video, we're going to look at customizing the work environment inside Bobcad. So we're going to start a new file. When we're in a new file, you can see all the toolbars become active. Now, a lot of these toolbars you may or may not use. What you can do to make the screen a little more bigger or a little more visible is you can actually change the toolbars on the screen. You'll see this black dotted line to the left of all the toolbars. This allows you to grab the toolbar by left clicking it and then drag it to another location on the screen. Also, you can drag them off the screen and then click the red X to turn them off. So you may find that there's certain toolbars that you use and certain toolbars that you do not use. So you might want to set up the screen for what you do. For instance, if you're doing only 2D work, not doing any 3D drawing, you probably wouldn't want the solid toolbar on the screen. Here's our selection mask. Now, if you lose a toolbar and you want to bring it back, here, let's say that we accidentally close our view toolbar and we want it back, we can come up into the toolbar area, right click, and we get all of our toolbars. We can turn them on or off from here as well. So let's say our view, and we can go ahead and dock the toolbar again by dragging it up and then letting it go. Now the same is also true for the Data Cam Tree Manager and the Layer UCS Post Manager. You can drag these anywhere on the screen and dock them on either side of the screen or close them. Now if you're missing a window and you need to bring it up, same thing. Right click on any one of the toolbars and you can go ahead and click on Data Cam Tree Manager and Layer UCS Post Manager. Now the other thing that you can do is you can also hide or pin these two boxes. You'll see the little pin icon. If you click on this, it condenses the menus to the right. It gives you a little more screen to work with. You can then bring the mouse over and hover over, and then the menus will pull out onto the screen until you move the mouse away. It's just an auto-hide feature, and then you could pin them back if you want to leave them on the screen. All the commands in the system can be accessed either through a button or through one of the drop-down menus. And you'll see that the buttons will match the picture. There's also keyboard shortcuts, like in this case, F is fit all. Now, you can assign shortcut keys to all of the commands as well if you prefer to use the keyboard. You do this by going to Preferences and then Shortcuts and you get a list of all the commands in the software and let's say that for a rectangle we want to make that let's say control R so we'll go find our rectangle command so we'll go find other than rectangle here it is and then we'll create a shortcut and then I'll press control R and then click OK now we can see the assigned shortcut is Control R. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now when we go to Other and look at Rectangle, you'll see that the Control R shows as a shortcut next to it. And also if we hold down the Control key and press R, the Rectangle function becomes active in the dialog box. Now for customizing the screen, such as colors and layout, if you go under Preferences, you'll see that there's a Settings Part and Settings Default. If we go to settings part, this will change the current drawing. Settings default will only affect future drawings. In here, you can change things such as the background color. Now, this is something good to be able to change. Uh, it's a very common problem to bring in a drawing that somebody sent you, say, with a white background and white lines, because in their system, their screen was black, or vice versa, and that will make it very hard to work unless you could change these. Let's come back here to Preferences, Settings Part. In here you can change the colors, whether or not the axes show on the screen. We can get rid of those. As well as you can change system tolerances, whether or not if the system auto saves the file. Your units that you work with, either inch or millimeter. How many decimal places the system works with or displays. Whether you're in lathe mode or diameter mode your text settings, the default setting for when you place text on the screen, 
as well as your arrows and dimension types. So this is where you set up how the dimensions are going to be styled or look and how your points are going to be displayed on the screen. You can also customize the toolbars down to creating a toolbar that has what you use on it. If we come here to Preferences, Customize, you'll see in here we can create a new toolbar and we'll give it a name. And then we get a blank toolbar. Now we can drag and drop commands to this toolbar to create our own custom toolbar. So if we go through our commands here, let's say View, we can put our View All, our Blank and On Blank, and let's say we have a couple of tools that we use like rectangles, hole patterns, and maybe trimming. If you hover over these it displays what command it is. And you could also drag and drop and rearrange these within their own toolbar. Once you've done this, you now have a custom toolbar with your icons on it. That will show up in the right-click menu as well.